I'm Hansi and this is Natural Nerd. Today we're going to make a light control panel which can be used to dim the light of an entire room with pleasant color feedback on the panel. Here are the most important parts for this build and as always you'll find the links to the parts in the description. To hold our electronics I'm going to use perf boards. Since mine were a little small I'm going to use two instead of one. The Arduino is going to control the power flow out our light sources later on and it will tie our two perf boards together. I soldered the Arduino right onto the perf boards. It turns out this was a stupid mistake and you'll see why later. To be able to control a 12 volt power source with the 5 volt output pins from the Arduino, we're going to use MOSFETs which can act as power gates activated with a lower voltage. For the record I ended up using only 3 of the 4 MOSFETs. We'll get to the wiring soon, for now I'm just securing them on the board. The next thing we're going to do is to create a wire on the perf board that all the ground cables can connect to. This will also be the common ground for the Arduino and the external power supply. Since I don't have any uninsulated wire, we'll be using the wires from a couple of resistors. We'll solder them together so it stretches across the entire perf board. This wire is not connected to anything yet, but as I said it will be our ground. The next thing we need to do is to connect the source of the MOSFET to the ground cable. We repeat this stage for all the MOSFETs. Just as before, I'm using a wire from a resistor. In order to make the MOSFETs able to turn on and off the power based on the Arduino signal, we'll connect the Arduino to the ground cable, which will be connected to our power supply. To hook up the Arduino, we create a solder bridge between the pin and some wire. Now we attach this wire to our common ground. Then we connect every left pin of the MOSFET, which is the gate, to their own digital pin on the Arduino. When that's done for all four MOSFETs, we can cut down the pins we're done with, to make it a little easier to work with. Ok, it's time to take a look at the power connectors. When we solder these up, keep in mind that the long pin usually means negative, while the short one means positive. Basically, we're going to use four of them. One for input power and three for output. Feel free to use 4 outputs as we do have 4 separate MOSFETs, but I'm just going to save one for later. Another thing we need to repeat 4 times is hooking up the potentiometers. All of them will connect to the 5 volt output of the Arduino, and I'm just using solder bridges here again. They will also be connected to the ground. Lastly, each of them needs to be connected to a separate analog pin on the Arduino board so that we can read its value and map it to the power output in the end. So I left my project down here in the basement over the night and when I tried to start the Arduino today I realized that it wasn't taking inputs from the potentiometer. So I tried the other analog inputs and it seems like the entire Arduino input reader is broken. Which means that I basically have to solder everything again at least I don't have to do the MOSFET controllers, but I have to reattach them to the Arduino board. This time I'm gonna use these header pins to create a breakout board. If the Arduino breaks again in the future, I can just take out the Arduino and replace it with another one. Without having to do any soldering. So yeah, I have to do that again. God damn it! So really quickly I grabbed some female to male header pins and stuck them where the Arduino was before. Then I soldered the headers in place and reattached all the wires. Now we can take the Arduino in and out as we please. And this is how I should have done it to begin with. Just to test everything, I have connected the negative of power supply to our common ground, and the positive to an LED strip. The negative wire from the LED strip goes to the drain of a MOSFET. After powering the Arduino and uploading some simple code, we can see that the dimmer works. The next thing I did was to begin on the box which will hold everything. Using some wood boards and the table saw I cut equally wide pieces of wood which will be the edges of the box. To make a flush edge with the plexiglass front I'll create later, I used a router to make an indentation in the wood which was about half a centimeter deep. When I had the lengths I needed I tilted the blade to a 45 degree angle and cut four sides with angled corners. To get this right the pairs for the long and short side needs to be the same length, else the box will be skewed in the end. With all sides chopped to nice pieces I arranged them into their final position to make sure everything looked ok before I added some wood glue. 
I applied the glue to the wood one corner at a time, and since I didn't have any angle clamps, I used a regular angle and stuck it to the wood with some normal clamps, just to make sure everything would end up nice and straight. I left it to dry for some hours before I repeated the same process with all the other corners. In the end I was left with a nice looking rectangle, it's in no way perfect with about 2mm length difference on each side which I'll have to account for later when I'm cutting out the plexiglass. To strengthen the construction I also used some angle brackets. This is optional and be aware that if you do this it won't sit entirely flush against the wall. Now we'll create the bottom which will act as a socket. The idea is to fasten the bottom on the wall with screws and hopefully the box will fit snugly on top of it, so it hangs without the help of anything else. This way it can be easily taken on and off if needed. I used the scroll saw to cut it out, which was a little hard, I think the table saw would have been a better choice here. It was a little big to fit inside the box, so I slowly filed it down until it was a tight fit. Then it was time to cut out the plexiglass. And as I mentioned before, the box is not perfectly rectangular, so I measured the size that the front panel needed to be, and then I used the scroll saw to cut it out. I tried many methods for cutting the acrylic, and the scroll saw definitely produced the best result for me. The next thing I did was to plan where the buttons would sit, and then mark on where the plexiglass I needed to drill holes. This turned out to be more tricky than I thought, the plexiglass was too thick for the tread on the potentiometers to go through. I had to make the plexiglass thinner by using a wide drill bit and drill halfway through the panel. Luckily the buttons have a large diameter so it will be covered up in the end. Then I marked on the box frame where I wanted the power connectors to go through and then I drilled holes for them. To make the box a little smoother and nicer, I filed down all the corners and then used a sander to sand down the entire thing. I then took some wood stain that I like and used some cloth to apply it to the frame. I don't want the acrylic to be transparent, but I still want it to be nice and shiny. To achieve this look, I took off the protective film on the acrylic and spray painted the backside white. While that's drying, we can place the power connectors we soldered together earlier. Sticking them through the holes we drilled should give a tight fit. If you feel it's not quite tight enough, this is a good time to add some glue. We solder on the power connector so that the one to the right supplies power to the Arduino and to the other output connectors. To do this, the ground wire has to connect to the row with the common ground, while the positive wire needs to connect to all the positive inputs. This means every output connector needs to connect its ground to the drain of a MOSFET and its positive wire to the positive wire from the input connector. This has to be repeated for all our output connectors, so that each power output is connected to its own MOSFET drain. If you'd like to learn more in depth about electronics and how MOSFETs work, I recommend a YouTuber called Great Scott, which makes really good videos. To power the Arduino and a 5V RGB LED strip, we need to step down the voltage from 12 to 5V. We solder on the 12V power cables on the input side and adjust the power output with little potentiometer so that it outputs 5V exactly. And by the way, this is a power step down circuit which I bought on eBay for about $3. The next thing we do is to hook up the 5V output to the V-in and the ground pins on the Arduino. This should power the Arduino when we connect a 12V power supply to the input connector on the box. Now I know this is a lot, but we're soon done with electronics, so please bear with me. We take some RGB LED strip and glue it around the box lid. Later on this is going to provide nice smooth light and also work as a visual indicator of how much output power each port gives. We connect the signal cable on the LED strip to one of the Arduino output pins. And lastly connect the positive and negative to the 5V output on the step down circuit. Now when the paint on the acrylic is dry, we can remove the film on the surface. We can fasten the button on top of it. Which I by the way won't go in depth about, as I haven't really decided what to use it for. What I have done is connected it to 12 volts to make it light up blue. Now we can push all the potentiometers through the hole. Then tighten the nut around the threaded bolt before we put on the knobs. Time to put it up on the wall. I fastened the wood socket on the wall where I wanted it so I could push the whole panel on. Because of the tight fit, everything stays in place just because of friction. 
but here would be a good place to for instance attach some silicon or epoxy to hold the front panel in place. Personally, I like to be able to take it easily on and off, so I will let it be as it is. Here you can see how it works with an external LED panel. The idea is that this will control the light in my entire basement once I get some lights up. Notice how the internal light changes based on how much the potentiometer is turned. I think this is really cool. And the code for everything will be linked to in the description if you want to check this out for yourself. If I was to do it all over again, I would have made more space for the cables and paid more attention to cable management, because the shadow of some of the cables are visible on the panel. All in all, I'm very happy with the build, and the next video will be about creating a ceiling light that is controlled by this panel. I just want to give a huge thanks to our first 1500 subscribers. You guys really keep me motivated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.